Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate agent Liz Beckett of the Beckett team at Keller Williams Realty based out of St. Charles, Missouri. Liz is a divorced mom of two grown daughters and got her realtor license in 2002. She has called Keller Williams Realty her home since 2006 and has been on their agent leadership council for the last five years, which is a big honor. St. Louis Magazine's April edition for the past seven years has named her a five-star realtor. Only 67% of realtors in Missouri get this privilege and are voted in by their peers and past clients. All right, with all that said, Liz, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. And Liz, if we could start for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? Kind of, a little bit of both, I guess. I, uh, My whole family has been in either the construction industry, uh, commercial and residential, uh, my entire life. So I've been in that kind of atmosphere. But about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I met a man named Brian Kelsey, who is really big here in St. Louis. And within four weeks, I had my license. Um, I was impressed with the lunch that we had. I met him at a lunch and he mentored me for my first four years in business. And that's why I have my good, solid background and base in the real estate industry. And can you talk a little bit about what personal attributes, traits, or qualities you think have most contributed to the success that you've had in real estate? Being a self-starter, I I think, is the biggest thing I tell people when they ask me about getting into real estate. Uh, If you cannot get up every morning and do what you have to do, which is uh, lead generate and prospect and follow up those leads, you're not going to make it in this business. Uh, it, It has to be a job. It can't be um, you know, your own business. So you work when you want to work because you're never going to make it through the hard times. And when a shift happens, you're going to be out of the business. So I think the biggest thing I would say is to be a self-starter. But other than that, you have to be likable. You have to continue your education and constantly be up to date on the market and what's going on in that market. And do you think give our listeners an example of when these traits have played a role in your path towards success? The biggest one recently, I think, is when the big shift happened a couple of years ago and everybody was saying how terrible the market was. And to me, it was just an opportunity. I think the way you look at things uh, has a big part of what happens to you. Uh, The old saying is how you look at things. When you look at things differently, they will seem different to you. So being in the game and looking at opportunities instead of looking at the challenges is the biggest thing that has helped me move forward. When people were saying it was a down market and a terrible market, I just kept doing what I did every day, which is prospect and lead gen and it all, you know, I'm still in the business because of it. And I think whenever somebody builds a successful business or a career that sometimes the path to get there is filled with bumps in the road along the way. Can you talk about some of the adversities and trials that you had to overcome in order to achieve your goals? I have, just like everybody else, um, you do your daily business and uh, some days it's hard, some days it's easy. And the adversities I had to come by with having a family is basically getting my family on board that even though uh, I'm in real estate, everybody seems to think, Oh, well she can run the kids here. or She can do this or she can do that because she runs her own business. I had to basically let everybody know that, no, I work nine to five. I work some evenings. And when I am lead generating, you do not bother me. So I have certain times every day that I lead gen and I tell my uh, friends and family when that time is. So they know that if they call me during that time, I cannot answer the phone. And I give them a, um, a cue of what to do if it's an emergency. And then I know I need to call them. But other than that, it's just basically staying 
point. And when you need to delegate, you need to delegate. Uh, I finally had to hire an assistant because I kept, my business would be up and down. I'd get so many leads and get so many buyers under contract or listings that I would back off on my lead gen to be able to take care of those clients. So uh, being a, able to delegate that to now a full-time assistant has helped. So uh, asking for help when you need it gets you further in this business. And I guess, you know, as these obstacles come up for you, you know, uh, what, what keeps you going despite these obstacles? Why don't you give up what you're driving for us? You know, I, finding my big why in this business was my biggest hurdle. Uh, everybody says after you find your big why, you know, you can make a success in anything that you're doing. Uh, with real estate, I love what I do. It doesn't seem like a business. So I am lucky enough to be able to wake up every day and do something I love to do. Now, that being said, some days are more challenging than others. So I am uh, constantly trying to network with other agents. Uh, I have a mastermind group that I meet with of my peers, not all real estate agents, just talking about the challenges of business and throwing my issues out there to them and getting their advice on things. I also am constantly doing educational classes you need to keep up, but also doing those extra classes just to learn things and be in front of the industry. Uh, I do a lot. If you want to learn something, the best way to do that is to teach it. So through Keller Williams, I do teach a lot of classes in our office also. And looking forward, what's your vision for your business and your career over the next five years? I would like, I'm on the agent leadership council for Keller Williams. I enjoy that. I love working with new agents and you have to be in the top 20% in the company to be able to have that privilege. So staying in that top 20% are I would really like to get in the top 5%. But other than that, I did start an investment company uh, helping investors and um, their career paths and their goals. So now that I have two businesses, a retail business and a wholesale business, I'm trying to build my retail business so I can walk away from it a little bit and focus more on the investment end of it um, and solutions investment group. And I guess kind of on top of that, what do you feel is the best way that you market yourself as a real estate professional so you can have continual growth? I have been taught from the very beginning to watch your dollars. So the biggest way I market myself is through my uh, sphere of influence, my SOI, and keeping in touch with them and keeping in front of them. I get a huge amount of business from those people because they believe in me, they know me, and they trust me. Other than that, I, my assistant, you know, markets to all of the, um, you know, social media sites that you can market to. I do not do a lot of advertising. Other than that, um, I would say most of mine is word of mouth, and it has got me to it where I'm at today. And I think sometimes when the public looks at real estate agents, they don't fully understand the value they provide from both the buyer and the seller standpoint. What do you think the biggest misconception or myth people have about working with a real estate agent? Wow, I'm so glad you asked that question. That is so frustrating to me. It's just like any other uh, industry that you're in, you provide a value. And my biggest goal with my clients is to make sure they know what that value is. So many people think they can put a sign in the front yard and sell their house. If they can do that, more power to them but only, I would say, less than 5% of homes get sold that way, if it's in a good market or a bad market. So when you're dealing with their biggest investment that most people own, which is their real estate, you need to have a professional that helps you through the hurdles, make sure that you get the most money from that investment to move forward because you want to move that money wisely. And uh, that's what I help people do because there is so many pitfalls that you can fall into on a real estate transaction and people don't realize that. So I really try my best to make sure that every client knows what they get for their money. And if they have any questions, they can come to me no matter if I'm doing a transaction with them or not. So after the transaction is done, I actually sit down with those clients 
and have them fill out a survey. And I actually talk to them on how do you feel I can better my business. And I have learned so much from my clients that I think it has made me get through this industry as long as I have been in this industry. And let's say you get a call from a family member or a friend and they're in another state and they want to sell their home. Obviously, with your experience and being part of Keller Williams, you can easily look up an agent and do a referral. But from a general advice standpoint, what advice would you give them about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs? Mostly, I uh, ask them what their needs are first, because every transaction, you know, each client has different needs. Uh, It might not be, obviously, everybody wants to get the most out of their real estate transaction that they can or their home. But other than that, each individual has different requirements of what they're wanting out of an agent. So what I do is I ask them, what do you want, uh, other than the dollar amount, what do you want to get from your realtor? What are you looking for? What do you need from them? And if it is a family member or a friend, I actually call that state uh, call, and I do call other Keller Williams offices, and I talk to the broker. And I say, I want your uh, the person in your office that is the best at whatever that is. You know, I want them uh, to do what my client wants. So after I get two or three people, I always call them and I interview them for my family member. And then I call them and say, okay, if it were me, I would pick this person. And I give them that person. And then I also give them a second person just to interview. Uh, but you want to make sure that... Uh, they know what they're doing. You want to make sure that they, you you want to know what their ratios are, uh, how many homes they sold, what is the ratio from sale to list to sale value, how long they've been in the business. If they if it's a short sale, do you have any experience in that? Do you have any experience in apartment complexes or whatever you're looking at? And you want to make sure that they do more than what I call is the so what value, which is basically putting a sign in the yard, you know, calling the top 100 agents, putting on the websites, open houses, and everybody puts it in the MLS. That's basically what most agents do, and they don't do anything more than that. And I'm like, well, so what? Why should I even hire you then? You want them to do a lot more than that. And obviously, based out of uh, St. Charles, Missouri, and if somebody's looking for real estate services or an agent in that general area, what's the best way they can find out more information about you and how you can help them? Well, you can actually go to my website, which is www.buyingandsellinghomes.info, or you can just put my name into Google. I think I'm in the top percent. You know, I think my name comes up like the first one or two people. If you don't, if if you have any questions and you're in this area or not even in this area, you can call me. If if I am not the right fit, if it's not my specialty, I will make sure that, that I put you in front of the person you need to be in front of. Excellent. Well, Liz, obviously we want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come here today and share your professional real estate experience with our listeners. And if you're listening and you want to learn more about Liz, actually blow this interview, we'll have a link to her site and any other contact information we have so you can see how she can help you with your real estate needs. So with that said, everybody, until our next show, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.